this lecture is an introduction to the two different branches of probability. It is not discussed directly in the text. One of the branches, called the frequentist approach, is discussed um, in section 3.2 on pages 62 to 63. One of the reasons I'm giving this introduction is sort of to put your mind at ease. As you see, these various um, these various probabilities develop. Somewhere in the back of your mind, you're thinking, yeah, but in the real world, I'm not so sure how this would work out. So in a sense, you're already aware that there are two different ways to look at the probability that an event will occur. The one school of thought that has become sort of the most popular, at least in the century, is well, in the previous century, is the frequentist approach. In this school of thought, the uh, probability that something will happen is developed just by considering the number of ways it can happen divided by the number of possible outcomes in the experiment. In fact, this method is used both in both schools of probability. It's just what happens with it next. Okay, so let's look at this for a second. So you're rolling a die. There's six sides to it. By the way, die is a singular of dice. It seems like sort of an awkward word. So you're rolling a die. It has six sides. What are the possible faces that can show up? Well, you've got one of six faces, and they each have a different number on them. So that's the total possibilities that goes down here. What's the number of ways that two can occur? Well, there's only one. So this is the number of ways for the particular um, event you're looking at. This is the probability that a two will show up. Okay, now what a frequentist does with this is make the statement that although it's true that every t every sixth time you roll the dice doesn't show up a two, but if you rolled it enough times or a great number of times and you counted up the number of times that two showed up, it would be one sixth of those times. And that is a frequentist approach, and that's what usually presented, or that's what is presented in most most course, courses on statistics. Now let's look at the other school, and that's called the Bayesian, Bayesian statistics, or Bayesian school of statistics. It is named after Reverend Thomas Bayes, who was, um, uh, who lived in England, and his office, so to speak, was um, the pubs, and he computed probability. He computed probabilities for people betting on games of chance. There's several steps in the Bayesian statistics. Um, first, the Bayesian statistics can be applied to anything, even a hypothesis. Okay. The other approach is is applied only to random events. Right. Now, in this Bayesian approach, you start off with an initial guess called a prior probability or just a prior. This is usually exactly what you do in the frequentist approach. If you're rolling that two on the die, we'd probably start off with saying, well, there's a sixth of a chance that it will that the two will show up. Okay, here's the next step in Bayesian analysis. The die is rolled a few more times, or maybe even one time, and you look at the results. Then you combine by various rules, you combine your prior probability and the new data, and you adjust your probability based on what you saw, and this is now called the posterior probability. It's like an updated guess as to what's going to happen, and that is what Bayesian statistics gives you. Instead of saying it's the probability that if you roll it, roll that die an infinite number of times, two will show up when six of those times, instead it gives you a measure of confidence, sort of a probability that you might know what's going to show up next. This, of course, is a little more useful. But it does require several steps. And one criticism of the Bayesian approach is what do you what do you select for the prior probability? Often it's the same thing that you would in the frequentist approach. So the Bayesian approach is actually more intuitive. It's what we use casually in life. It's also used formally in many fields such as machine learning and astrophysics. So here's a little scenario that I made up just to help you keep these two schools of thought separated. Um, 
the frequentist at a, at a casino would say that if you keep shoving money into a machine, eventually it will pay off because there's set up with certain odds that it's going to pay off at certain times. You just have to keep playing it. In the Bayesian approach, you would be standing behind the craps table. You'd show up there with an idea of how things are going to go and how the betting might go and how the results might go, but you just stand there and watch the game for a while and kind of update your ideas before you join in. Interestingly enough, sometimes the frequentist approach and the Bayesian approach give the same result.